Okay, so inference for part six, t-test. Which of the following true about students' t-models? One, are they unimodal, symmetric, and bell-shaped? That answer is yes. Part two says they have fatter tails than the normal model. So if we look at this, here is the t-test. Notice its tail doesn't get close to the axis where on a normal model, this is for the z-table, they come to get really close. So yes, they have fatter tails. They're bigger in the middle. Excuse me, they're taller. They're not as wide as what this is. They're more narrow, but they have fatter tails. So this is also a true statement. And then the last one, okay, and then the last, next one is, as the degrees of freedom increase, the T model looks more and more normal. That is also true, so this answer is E. Okay, number two. A researcher found that 98% confidence interval for the mean by hours per week spent studying by college student was between 13 to 17. Which of these is true? Okay, there's a 98% uh, chance. No, it says chance. That's not happening. That's not, an, so it's not one. Okay, 98% of college students study. No, there's this confidence intervals are not percentages of people. They're with a range under a normal model of what we expect something might occur. Students average between 13 and 17 hours per week studying on 98% of the weeks. No, so the answer here is none. Answer number two is A. Okay, number three. Professor was curious about our students' grade point averages. She took a random sample of 15 students and found a mean uh, GPA 3.01 standard deviation of 5.534. Which of the following form formulas gives a 99% confidence interval? Okay, so let's do the simplistic part first. Let's find RT star. So um, 15 students, so 14 and 99%. So degrees of freedom is 14. And 99% is this column. So I come up and I go over from 14 and it's 2.977. So which of these has 2.977? No, no, yes, yes, no. Okay, and then it's square root of the standard deviation over N. N is 15. B is my answer. Sorry for the sniff. Okay, a philosophy professor wants to know whether the mean range of men in his lecture class is equal to the mean age of women in his classes. I guess he teaches older folks. After collecting data from the random sample of his students, he tested the hypothesis that mu of m minus mu of w is zero against the alternative that they're not equal. Test value is 0.03. Which of these is true? Okay, let's see. There's a 0.3% chance. Uh, no. Uh, there's a 0.3%. No. It is unlikely that the professor will result that if the mean age of men and women were equal to the mean age of men. That is true. That's the only part of that that's true. Okay. When you read the word chance, ignore that answer. Chance is a bad sign. Okay, number five. Absorption rate in the bodies are important considerations. I'm sorry, this is shaky. When considerations, when manufacturing a generic version of a brand name drug, pharmacist read that the absorption rate in the body of a new genetic drug G is the same as its counterpart B. Uh, she has a researcher friend who runs her a small experiment to test their, whether they're equal or not equal, which of the following would be a type one error. Type one is when we reject the null hypothesis and we shouldn't have deciding the absorption rates were different. That's the alternative when in fact they're not. If we reject this, we reject the null hypothesis. That's a type one error. This is my answer. The rates are Art are different. That's what this means when they are in fact not. In other words, the generic and the brand name counterpart have the same amount. Okay, so on to the next part. Okay, for this one, we're going to use our calculator for number six. Oops, sorry about that. Two samples where statistics are given in a table are thought to be come from populations with equal variances. What is the pooled estimate? Okay, and I know I told you never do pooled with that. But if they ask this on, a, on an exam, okay, if they ask this on an exam, this is simply what you need to do. Okay, we're going stat, going over to test, and we have two samples. So we're doing, we can do number four, two sample t-test. Okay, so as we work this, they're giving us stats, not the data. 
we don't have a list of numbers, we have stats. So go to sample t-test and stats, and we type in, let's see, x bar is 32. The mean of that data is 5, and there are 25 things in that sample. And then we just simply put all the numbers in. Let's see, 30 and 6 and 20. Now, down here, it doesn't matter what you put on this part. Now, here's the pulled part, and you want to say yes, because this is the only time you'll do this on a multiple choice question. And then we go down and calculate. Now, it doesn't matter which of these three you pick. I'm going to go ahead and pick greater than. Yep, I'm going to say that mu one's greater than mu two, as opposed to u two. Okay, and we calculate, and we notice all these numbers here, and then we oh shoot, <clears throat> silly me, I accidentally press clear instead of the down arrow. And so we scroll down the screen. There it is. See, there's the standard, this is the standard deviation right here of it pulled, and that's 5.64, and that's, I'm sorry, 5.46. That's what it was, 5.46. So that answer is C. All right, then we turn the page and look at number seven. Okay, a little bit different here. Uh, one vehicle station, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 13 out of 52 trucks and 11 out of 88 cars failed the emissions test. Assuming these vehicles represent of all cars and trucks in that area, what is the standard error of the difference of the percentage of all cars and trucks? Now, percentages. Percentages. This means it is a Z test, not a T test. Proportions. So I want to do 13 out of 52, which is 0.25. I want to do 11 out of 88 which is 0.125, and then from that, whoops, you can't see that part. There we go. Now from this, that's my P hat 1. This is my P hat 2, and I want the difference. So I go second square root. This is off the formula page, 0.25 times 0.75 divided by, there were 52 trucks, plus 0.125 times 0.75. 875 divided by, there were 88 cars, enter, and that's 0 0.0696, so about 0 0.070. That answer for number seven is D. Okay, we have to use the pool. This is on the formula page under the standard error for uh, proportions, the top of the page on the formula page. Okay, at one SAT test, students have taken the test for the second time, volunteered to inhale supplemental oxygen for 10 minutes before the test. Some received oxygen, but others were just given normal air. Test results show that 42 of 66 who received oxygen improved their SAT scores compared to 35 of 63 who did not get the oxygen. Which procedure would you use to see if there was evidence that breathing extra oxygen can help test takers think more clearly okay look it's 42 out of 66 it's 35 out of 63 it's proportions again it's a two sample z test so number eight is b okay number nine on what percent of days do you get more than 30 minutes of vigorous exercise using their response we want to estimate the difference in exercise between men and women okay now here comes a problem here comes a major problem this says percentages on it this says what percent of the days, okay? And so we're then comparing men's and women's percents of the days. So what we're really going to end up doing is finding the average amount, finding the average amount of each one of the males and the females. Oops, sorry, I dropped my pencil. Oh, no, I dropped my pencil and broke my lead. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can find another pencil. No pencils, this pen will have to do. So they want the average amount of time each of them exercise 30 minutes each week. Okay, it doesn't say that. Not a very good question. I don't like this question. I'm not going to count against you if you got it wrong. They say the answer is D. I probably would have said it's a um, I probably would have said it's a two proportion Z interval, 
but we weren't given the number of men and women. It makes sense now that more that I think about it, that this is going to be a T interval. Okay, that it's going to be a T interval. What percent of the days do you exercise more than 30 minutes? Doesn't say during a week, during a month. Exercise frequency between men and women. Well, that's a hard question. That is a hard question. But they say the answer is D. It's a two sample T interval. So number nine is D. Next one's easier. Two ergonomists are agronomists. Anyhow, two guys that study agricultural stuff. Testing the same null hypothesis about the proportion of tomato plants suffering from blight. One rejected the hypothesis, but the other did not. Assuming neither made a mistake in calculations, what's the possible explanations? Okay, the one obvious one, one obvious one, is that one had a higher alpha than the other one. One might have had 0.05, the other had 0.01, or, or 0.1 as compared to 0.05 or to 0.01. So they wrote identical hypothesis, but one rejected because they had a higher alpha level. That's possible. Okay, uh, they wrote identical hypothesis, but one rejected the no used a lower alpha. No, that would not. If you had a lower alpha, there's a less chance of you rejecting. So two might be an answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now but I hadn't read the first one, so it's definitely this one. It's definitely two. One at one one guy studying agriculture wrote a one-tailed hypothesis, the other used two tails. That is also a true statement. Because if you think about it, if I'm looking at a one-tailed test, okay, I could have just this area that doesn't fit the hypothesis. But if I'm looking at two-tailed test with my normal model, I not only would have this end, but I also would have this end added together. So this is also, so it's one and two, or answer D. Okay, uh, number uh, 11, vacation days differ by companies. It's skewed to the right. We collect data on the number of vacations of this random sample across the United States. What is okay to use these even though the population is skewed? The answer to that is yes, because 60 is such a large sample size. 60 is a large sample size. It's bigger than 30. Okay, the mean and standard deviation of 60 companies is 22 days and 9 days, respectively. Specify the sampling model. In other words, is it going to be a T model or a Z model, which this is T because it's mean. What's the center? Well, the center is still going to be 22. And what's our spread? What's our standard deviation? We've got to find a new one. So it's a T test with a mean of 22. And a standard deviation of 9 over the square root of 60. Okay, and those are both good answers. It's a t-test where the mean is 22 days and the standard deviation is 9 over the square root of 60. Okay, it wants us to find a 95% confidence interval. So it said it was random. 60 is less than 10% of all companies. Whoops, companies, I started right, countries. Comp I'm falling apart here. Companies and large sample size. So we don't have to draw the model. Okay, next question. Um, so we have our standard, our confidence interval is going to be x bar plus or minus t star of 59 times 9 over the square root of 60. All right, now we can run this in the calculator. Again, go stat, go over to test. And it's a simple T interval, so that's number eight. We're going stats again. Let's see, my X bar was 22, my standard deviation was nine, my N was 60, and it's a 95%, yeah, it is a 95% confidence interval, and I calculate, 
and my interval is 196675 to 24 19.675 to 24.325 so we are 90% confident, 95% confident. The the mean number of vacation days offered by U.S. companies. falls between 19.675 days and 24.325 days. And what does this mean in the long run? If we find a lot more samples of size 60. We would expect 95% of them to contain the true mean. To contain the true mean. Number of days of vacation. For U.S. companies. I'm done. Hope that was enough. Only took me 18 minutes.